Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy and welcome to this tutorial on the HTML5 Geolocation API. So what we're going to be doing is at the start of the tutorial, we're going to briefly explain how this works, uh, look at some code that we can write, very, very simple to uh, click, a, click a link and get our location on a map. Um, and then we're going to talk about some of the more advanced features. So something that you might not need to use, but uh, something that might be interesting to those of you that want to take this a bit further and uh, perhaps gain some more accuracy on GPS enabled devices. So uh, the first thing to do is obviously have a look at how this works. You can see that I've got a map just in front of me here. I've got a link just up here and when I click get location uh, the website's going to ask for my permission which is a really really important uh, feature here because you can't gain a user's location without asking their permission so they have to um, they have to allow this it's opt-in rather than opt-out so uh, once we've uh, gained their location we're going to show this on a Google embedded map so let's go ahead and click get location and see what happens you see we've got this uh, little thing pop down similar on Firefox and other browsers uh, but I'm using just using Chrome to test this so it says local host which we're obviously running on a local server wants to use your computer's location so we can either learn more allow or deny this so the learn more will probably just take you to some Google uh, page I haven't actually clicked it um, deny will you know it won't let us let uh, the website determine our location but if we click allow what this is going to do is it's going to pinpoint us to our location. Now, don't get too excited. This isn't where I live. It's actually uh, quite a few miles from my house um, because this is more than likely IP determined. Um, so it's very, very, very rough idea. I'm sat at home at the moment on my computer just using my uh, internet service provider's internet connection. Uh, if I was on a mobile device, um, it, it might use cell tower uh, pinpointing. So that's usually accurate to, I think, about a thousand uh, meters. I'm not sure. Or a kilometer. I'm not sure. Um, maybe go and look that one up before you uh, take my accuracy advice. Um, if I had a GPS hardware enabled device, um, my location could more or less be pinpointed accurately. And this is for things where you need exact location. Uh, so this sort of brings us on to how geolocation works and, and what we should be using and when. Um, at the moment, let's just say I wanted to use geolocation to find uh, takeaways in my local area. This would more than likely suffice because although this is only a couple of, uh, still a couple of miles from my house, if we we're looking at a larger area and you know where can deliver, uh, for example, then this would be good enough. Um, if we were, for example, giving users specific instructions, so for example, directions, um, especially in real time, then this would absolutely not do. We'd need a GPS enabled device. And this is comes a bit later in the tutorial when we look at more advanced options. But what we're gonna do for now though is write the basic code that we need to do this. Um, obviously this is all JavaScript based. So we're going to uh, create a, an event handler. We're not gonna be using an external library like jQuery uh, to handle all of this because the you know pure JavaScript is absolutely fine for this. So we're gonna do this on a page. Everything is gonna go on one page because it's gonna be super concentrated and easy easy and uh, you can see just how easy it is to determine a user's location. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at that now. We'll clear the canvas and start writing some code from scratch. Okay, so we've arrived over at our text editor. Uh, you can see that I've got a basic um, HTML5 doc type uh, or, and a document outline. So we're gonna be placing everything in the body. We're gonna do some uh, inline script just so we've got everything on one page. It makes it a lot easier to concentrate on. Uh, but otherwise, keep all of your uh, JavaScript files in an external file and load them at the bottom of your page. So the first thing to do really is to uh, create this link that we're gonna click for the, uh, for the user to, well, have our location determined. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, actually no, we'll, we'll leave that. So this is blank. We may need to adjust the settings because I've already uh, allowed my browser to have my location so we want to get the full effect as you guys will be writing uh, at the moment so uh, we want the uh, the browser to ask for our location so I'll go ahead and reset that in just a moment uh, let's go ahead and create this anchor so this is going to just say get location and uh, the href for this is going to be just that's uh, just a hash and we're going to give an ID to this so we can uh, uh, set this up with an event handler and we'll just say get underscore location. So underneath this, we need to uh, give our map. So I'm just gonna create a div with the ID of map. 
And inside of this, I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm not going to waste any time uh, typing this out. Uh, you guys can go ahead and copy this. So I'll just I'll just show you uh, what we've got here. So we've got an iframe. Uh, the ID of this is Google Maps. So we'll target this as well because we need to change the source. We've got the width on there. We've got the height on there. We've got a uh, frame border zero, scrolling no, margin height zero, margin width zero. And then we've got a source. Now this is the original source. Basically this just links to maps.google.co.uk. Obviously if you're in uh, another country, that can be your own uh, TLD. Um, we have got output equals embed as one of the, as the query string after that. Um, and that's all we need. We'll change this source later when the user allows the location to be found, um, and then uh, and then that will show where we are. Now there are obviously loads of things that you can do with geolocation. Uh, essentially, what we're getting back is the coordinates of the user. So we don't we don't have to tie ourselves down to Google Maps. We can use any other map service that supports coordinates. We can use uh, other APIs and pass coordinates in. We can get, uh, grab the uh, latitude and longitude. So we don't need to worry uh, about tying ourselves down. This is just an example. Uh, so just adjust that. Um, so yeah, this is just an example here. So now onto the good stuff. We want to uh, create our uh, event handlers, which is boring, and then use our uh, geolocation API. So let's go ahead and create some script tags. Again, this should be external if, you, uh, if you're actually doing this for real. Um, and also I'm gonna use uh, global variables as well. So um, you're gonna wanna sort of maybe tie this into one namespace. So I'm going to say var uh, let's not start with that part actually. Let's start with the event handler for clicking our link. Let's start from the basics. So I'm going to say document dot get element by ID. Um, and what is that? Well, it's going to be get underscore location. I'm going to say dot on click equals a function. So inside of here is what's going to run when we click that link. So what do we want to do? Well, uh, the first thing we want to do is return false. Otherwise, uh, you know, things uh, go slightly wrong with this callback function. Uh, but we're using Navigator um, to uh, access the geolocation API. So let's say geolocation. You might have seen Navigator elsewhere, perhaps using for like browser detection and stuff. Not recommended, but... Uh, that's what we're using. Uh, and then we're going to use this method um, called get current position. Now we have a callback function in here, which I'm going to call C, which you saw me typing up here just a moment ago, and I said I'd leave that one. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, call the get current position method of geolocation, and it's going to um, pass in these details that we can then grab and output, do what we want with. So let's go ahead and create this function. So this function is called C. Uh, we can call it whatever we want. It really, really doesn't matter. You're not tied down to anything like this. Uh, and one of the arguments here is going to be pause, which is obviously position. And from this, we can say like pause.coords and we can say we'll grab the latitude, longitude, whatever. So we're going to start with the basics and later on we'll go to the more advanced stuff. So we're going to say var lat equals pause.coords.latitude. And let's put a comma there and let's grab the long, so the longitude. We'll say again, pause.coords.longitude. So we've got both of these, and then I'm going to create a final one called coords, which is going to combine them. Um, so let's just space these out. Uh, and this is going to be lat plus long, but we do want a comma in between them, because this is how the majority of applications take them. So we have the latitude, comma, longitude. So what we can do now is pass this into um, our map. So we again say document.get element by ID. And this time we want to get Google map, Google map. And then we're going to say dot set attribute. Um, this takes two parameters. The first one is the attribute you want, you want to set, which is the source. Remember over here we have the source, just the plain uh, Google Maps start page, if you like. Um, but we want to change this. So we want to do more or less exactly the same thing. So it's HTTP uh, S colon forward slash forward slash maps dot Google dot co dot UK. And then we have a query uh, string at the end. So we have Q equals 
and then the coordinates. We have another uh, couple we need to put in, but I'm just going to put uh, 0, 0 there for now. We also have uh, a zoom option, so I'm going to zoom in 60. This, this is where you can change this, it's variable, so put whatever you want. And then we say output equals embed, as we have done up here. So what we've done is we're just replacing this original source with this. We've got the query string as the latitude and longitude. Um, we've got a zoom of 60 and we have the output of embed. So here, in, instead of uh, that 0, 0, which doesn't really make sense, we are going to have um, our coords, which is coords like that. So we're grabbing this value here and plonking that into there. So let's just run through this before we test it in our browser. We are have an event handler on our get location button that then calls geolocation and then the get current position method of geolocation. We use our callback function in here. So we've got C for callback. Uh, that has a uh, pause, which is one of the arguments, which we can then grab the coordinates, so the latitude and longitude, and then we put that into a variable called coords, and then we replace the, uh, the Google Map iframe source with the um, uh, this uh, URL and query string. So let's head over to our browser and refresh. Lovely. So everything looks as it should. Uh, if I go ahead and hit get location, you see it's automatically pinpointing me. This is something I mentioned a moment ago because my browser has um, uh, basically said, you know, you've accepted this site to track your location. So whatever page we're viewing on localhost can track our location if it wants to because we've given permission. But I'm going to go ahead and clear these settings for future visits. Again, similar for other browsers. So if you're using Firefox, Safari, anything like that, you'll get the same sort of message up each time. This time, uh, this is assuming that a user hasn't visited the site before, hasn't, hasn't yet given permission. So I'm going to go ahead and click Get Location. So localhost wants to use your computer's location. We can either allow or deny this. So when I click Allow, there we go, and we've pinpointed the location. So that is essentially how we detect the user's uh, location with the GL HTML5 Geolocation API. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at some more advanced topics and we're going to delve into this a little deeper. So if you're just wanting to use this sort of general purpose, then, you know, you've already got this uh, this covered. Uh, when we go ahead and inspect this page, you can see that we've got the coordinates here being passed into uh, Google Maps. So uh, go ahead and play around with this and output things and, uh, you know, create alert dialogues for things. Uh, and like I said, in the next video, we're going to look at this in a bit more detail.